I'm Atuba George, and I'm so excited to be bringing God's word to you today. Now, this is a new week, and I know the Lord has great things in store for us this week. And as we open up our hearts to him, receiving his word, receiving his truth, remember, he said, man shall live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Take note, he said, proceeds, present, continuous. Now, that's why we bring this broadcast every day of the week for you. So you have an opportunity to open your heart and allow the Lord speak to you through this broadcast. Praise God. But before going to today's broadcast, can we call forth and make requests for our daily bread? Very important. So join me in faith as we declare, say, Father, I request this day for my daily bread and I receive it from you right now in Jesus name Amen Praise God Believe and receive it right now in Jesus name Amen Now turn your Bibles with me to Genesis chapter 4 Now we are talking about the judgment of God how does God judge things? How does God um, relate with us and take judgment in things that have to do with us? That's what we're dealing with. You know, because if you don't understand how God reasons, you won't know how to relate with Him. Sometimes we judge too quickly and our judgment is wrong. Praise God. So I'm going to, like, we've been looking at different issues in scriptures and how God dealt with them. So I want us to look at something here in Genesis chapter 4. Now let me let me just start from verse 1. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And again she bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was the tiller of the ground. And in the process, in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. Now, the Bible lets us know that Cain was a tiller of the ground, right? And then the Bible lets us know that Abel was a keeper, was a keeper of sheep. Now, it says in the process of time, Cain brought an offering from his fruits from what he had invested he brought it unto the lord and abel verse 4 and abel he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof see that and then he says and the lord now take note of this part and the lord has had respect unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. Did you see that? Now, you know, growing up, you know that whole um, Sunday school class and illustration they try to give to us. Why did God reject Cain's offering? He said, "Oh, Cain brought all the rotten things from his." Crop. Now, that's not what the Bible said. Remember, Cain was a tiller of the ground. Now, there's another theory that says it was supposed to be um, um, a, a blood sacrifice. In other words, it's, it was a sacrifice for sin. So, they were supposed to offer the sacrifice for sin. And Cain, instead of bringing a sacrifice that has blood in it, brought from the fruits of the ground. Now, that looks a bit logical, but you see, sometimes it will give us or it will help us if we just stick with what is written and then ask the holy spirit to bring us understanding see that now you look at this it's okay which one is right did he bring rotten offering or was it supposed to be a blood sacrifice sincerely speaking i don't think any of them is is really right now watch this the scripture is clear here it says, and that's, that's the B part of verse 4. And the Lord had respect unto Abel. 
and to his offering. Take note of that. If you miss that, you miss it. First, the Lord had respect unto Abel. Then he accepted his offering. For Cain, he says, but unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. What was he telling you? God did not accept Cain's person. He accepted Abel's person. And therefore he received his offering. But he did not accept Cain's person. And so did not receive his offering. Now the question now, why didn't he accept Cain's person? Why did he accept Abel's person? Now, very simple. You see, what Cain did afterwards will make you understand the kind of person he was. Cain, there was nothing wrong with their offerings if you want to judge the offering that they brought. There was nothing wrong with an offering. First and foremost, the Bible never said it was a blood offering that they were bringing. There is no scripture to point that out. Neither did the Bible let us know that Cain brought an, a, a bad offering or rotten offering. No. Why God rejected his offering was simply because God rejected his person. See that now? Now, Cain was one who would not listen to instructions. You give Cain instruction, he will do whatever is in his mind. Now, when you read further, you, you watch this now, verse 4. But unto Cain, verse 5, sorry. But unto Cain and his offering... He had no, not respect. And Cain was very wroth. And he, his countenance fell. Verse 6 now. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance falling? But he, if thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted. Notice, God didn't say, If you have done well, wouldn't I receive your offering? No, he said, will I not accept you? He wasn't speaking to right now about the offering. He was speaking about the fellow. If you have done well, wouldn't I have accepted you? Now take note of this. God will first of all accept you before he accepts your offering. You must understand this. If you don't understand, now, now I'm sorry, I'm sorry because this will point out to many people that their offerings have been in vain. Oh, yes. If God doesn't receive your offering, what do you think that offering is? Oh, like I told you last week, the church may enjoy your offering. Praise <laughs> God. Yeah, but you see, before the eyes of God, that offering was never given because he did not accept it. Watch now. God said, if thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall, his, shall be his desire, and thou, shalt, and thou shalt rule over him. Now, he was supposed to rule over sin. But God is telling him now to rule over sin is not by bringing an offering. To rule over sin is a demonstration of faith and authority from the person. So God was trying to help Cain here. It's not about what I can get from you. It's about what I want to make you into. So God says, do well, Cain. Get your act right. That's what God was saying to him. Get your act right. Behave well. Put your attitude right. If you don't, hey, Sin is by the door. Listen to me. Why do people, you know, some people, they keep committing errors and errors. You have talked to them. You have disciplined them. You have prayed for them. You've done all kinds of things you can do. But they just keep going into this error. And guess what they'll say is the devil. Brothers and sisters, it's not the devil. No devil has such powers to put you under in sin. No devil does. What puts a man in sin perpetually is simply his wrong attitude. His wrong behavior. 
God said to Cain, sin is lying at the door. Meaning, sin doesn't just come on top of you. It stays by the door and finds an opportunity. And that opportunity is an opportunity you will have to give to it by your character, by your attitude. Now, if you've really been a child of God for a long time, and, and you're consistently growing in the Lord, you would have come to this conclusion by now, depends on how long you've been. You would have come to this conclusion by now, that's if you really observe and, and reason out what God is doing in you. You will come to this conclusion that, listen, it doesn't matter what God does or, or what God says. If God wants to deliver a man from sin, he changes his perspective. That's all God does. Now, your perspective is fully under your control because you choose how you see. And let me give an example. Someone say, oh, I have a problem with fornication or I have a problem with adultery. I cannot help myself. Now, the truth is, now I know there are, there are people who are crazy. You know what I mean? They are crazy. They are, they are, not, they are not proper. See? They are not proper. I'm talking about proper people. Praise God. That have these issues. Now the truth is this. The day you're going to be delivered from such lifestyle or from such iniquity or sin is not by running and locking yourself up and say, I don't want to see anybody because anytime I see a lady, I don't know what happens to me. It's very simple. The day you're going to be delivered from that sin or from that situation is the day you open your eyes to see that, hey, not every lady is my wife. Is there any truth? Every lady can be my sister because I wouldn't do this to my sister. If you wouldn't do this to your sister, it means you actually have self-control. But your problem is you are not applying it. Do you love your sister? Yes, I do. But why, would, why wouldn't you do such things to your sister? Oh, no, I can't. I can't. It's because of how you see. See? So put that same sight on every other lady. Because sometimes people just have this mentality that if I'm close to a lady, then, then this must happen. No, if that's your sister, you've been close to your sister for many years. So why don't you change your perspective and see that person in a different light? That's all God will do for you. And suddenly you realize I'm free. I'm free. I'm not bound because that's the truth. You are not bound. So now you see that the challenge, just like God said to Cain, if you do what is right, you will be accepted. But if you don't do what is right, sin is waiting at the door. Change the way you see. If you change the way you see, it will affect your actions. Now, if your actions are right, then God will accept your person. And if God accepts your person, he will accept your sacrifice. That's how it works. But if God doesn't accept your person, I'm sorry. He will not accept your sacrifice. Another example you find in scriptures, Saul, King Saul. Samuel had instructed him, go by the word of the Lord. Go destroy Amalek and destroy everything, both man and beast. He got there and to carry out the instruction of God. And guess what? He, he came back with a king and some of the best animals and things. And they got it back. And guess what? They said, let's use this to give God an offering. Let's use this to give God a sacrifice. And Samuel came around and said, hey, what's going on here? He said, oh, I've obeyed the word of the Lord. Samuel said, nah. What is then the bleating of the sheep that I hear? Oh, it's the people that say we should use them and sacrifice unto the Lord. And Samuel said to him, Oh God, 
king. To obey is better than sacrifice. Now they were offering, already offering sacrifice unto the Lord. But the Lord was not receiving that offering. See that God cannot receive the offering that he did not instruct you to give to him. He is not a hungry God. He will not take what does not belong to him. He will never take it. Praise God. So now you see, God rejected Cain's offering because Cain's personality wasn't pleased. Cain's personality wasn't pleasing to him. That's why he rejected Cain's offering. Not because Cain's offering was rotten, not because, no, simply because he did not accept Cain's person. Praise God. And that's why many times people's lives keep going up and down, up and down. Your life can just be on the straight paths, up and above only. We give God offerings all the time. We give God tithe. We give God um, different kinds of offerings. But see, the fact that you give it doesn't mean he accepts it. If he accepts it, you will see the result in your life because the word of God will be coming to you expressly and freely. Our time is up for today. But listen, listen, do what is right and God will accept your person. It's as simple as that. Do I have the power to do what is right? Yes, you do. If anybody tells you it's some demons that are holding you back, I tell you the truth, they just lied to you. You have the power to repent. You have the power to change your life. What power is that? The power of willingness to turn over your life into the hands of God. Because you cannot change your life by your own words. You change your life by turning, that's where your power resides, turning your will over to be receiving instruction from the Lord. And then your change will begin to come from the word of the Lord. Praise God. I bless you today. And I declare indeed in the name of the Lord Jesus, your eyes are open to see right. And as you see, you follow what you see. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Go out today and receive the blessing of the Lord. God bless you. See you tomorrow.